the core of strategy work is pretty much always the same. It's about discovering, designing, prioritizing, focusing. So in a nutshell, this is what it is about. Hi, I'm Maria. I've worked with corporations, I've worked with startups, and there's something that stood out for me. There are lots of commonalities when we talk about launching, going to market or growing a company, growing a product, a service, a business model. So there are lots of things I've observed, but this particular video is about making clarity and making something out of sometimes nothing. So let's dive into that immediately. The thing is, it's not easy to come up with an idea that's going to make a big difference or join a team that's working on a certain product towards a certain vision. And when one wants to contribute in launching or growing this particular idea, helping out the team, whoever that may be, it's about always having a direction. It's always great to try things, but to have kind of a goal or an objective in mind. And this objective should be clear. And the way we can think about this is always thinking in that way. First of all, who's going to use this? Who's going to utilize it? Who's going to be checking it out numerous times? Whose life is it going to change? How is this going to make their life easier? How is this going to make their job easier? How is this going to make, I don't know, their studying time easier. So how is this going to make their performance easier? So there are many things to take into consideration. And the key factor is knowing who are you doing this for? Whereas this is building a physical product or building a kind of a course, I don't know, a coaching group, opening up a shop, whatever that may be. But even having some sort of a feature within a company that can expand and become something else. So Two things here. It's about knowing that anything you try to embark on can be bigger than what you think and might distract the focus of where you are today. So one key element is to always be laser focused and know what you need to deliver now. Have a roadmap that is clear, that does not allow you to get distracted, but always have this kind of wall behind you or somewhere where you stick all your ideas and everything you're planning to do at some point in time. The other thing is, why? Why are you trying to do what you're doing? What are you trying to achieve? So things can be like scattered completely. Like you can have like a puzzle in your brain that is with lots of pieces that are all over the place. And then you try to do something about them. And then you start questioning it. Yeah, we could do this. We could do that. We could do that. Yada, yada, yada. So it's always about knowing why and who is this for and not trying to grow this into a different area. Now, the other thing to take into consideration is to work efficiently because, and this is something I've seen many times in corporations or in startups, like the difference is that in big companies, you have the budget. So you sort of can afford to spend lots of time and resources. I don't really like the word resources, but put lots of people working on kind of the same thing in a certain way where you can have a team of like 10 people instead of having two or three who can, you know, do the same work in the same amount of time, because sometimes having many people doing the same thing can be distracting. Again, it depends on the projects. And in startups, it's the same thing, but the difference is that you don't have the money nor the time. You can't afford to do that. And there's lots of wasted time also. Now, I'm not saying like there are going to be mistakes. There is going to be wasted time, obviously. However, it's about working smart. It's allocating people who can deliver and do something rather than just getting them to do something. And then we figure it out and we see what we do with it. Because this is not going to be helpful, especially if you want to deliver quality as well. I personally don't think that anyone can become a designer overnight. Anyone can become great at, I don't know, content creation overnight. So there are things like that. Can you afford to spend this time to get this person ready for that if you don't know how to guide this person? So there are things here that are important. I'm not saying you should always aim for perfection. Again, what is perfection? What, what? But you you need to aim for something that is really good, that conveys the idea and the point where people would see, all right, I got value out of this and not questioning the quality of the work and how you got there. So 
this is something essential, especially when you have like client facing work. This is one key element. It's, I think some of the things really come from the top. So I'm not saying it's all about it, but top bottom approach, but some things come from the top when, you know, you're leading the team in a certain direction. So if you need to build something that your customer needs, that your customer will be using on a day-to-day basis, and this is the core of what you're doing, focus on the objective, have a strategy for it. Where do you want to get to? What is it that they need today that is going to tell them, oh, right, I really need this. This is really good. And I want to be checking this absolutely every day and build it. And then you can add things around it, but don't start with everything. And the key element is don't go and build, build, build before you launch, launch, launch. So start with something small, test it, see how it's going to be. This takes us to the other subject of testing and validating. You don't always have to ask, what do you think of that? Especially not in that way. You need to be smart enough to know what you want to get out of it and and what is the kind of feedback that will help you improve on what you have. I'm not saying that you're going to guess what kind of feedback they're going to be giving you, but the fact that they're checking this out and the fact that, I don't know, they're spending time watching it or reading it will give you an idea. The fact that they share it will give you an idea. So things like that are what you need to look for. And never go and ask, what do you think about the music in the background? You know, what do you think about what I said here? You know, it's, you know, invention came out based on something the market said. I want this. You need to do that for me. It's about identifying the need, identifying the opportunity, getting the insights out. And this is essential. Because you can spend so much time and so much money trying to get feedback and you'll be none the wiser the next day anyway. So I know I'm talking about so many different topics here, but there are so many things on my mind I want to bring up. And strategy is also not about skipping on some details that you would consider irrelevant. Nothing's irrelevant. It's only about prioritizing, focusing re-gearing this is what it is about because the strategy that you created today for tomorrow might no longer be valid in between because so many things that are happening anywhere every day in any industry that it's really hard to keep up so we need to be able to adapt so you need to have this sort of flexibility keep your vision up there but be able to rewire strategy but also the strategy is not a roadmap this is what keeps it and makes it flexible in a certain way so having your direction there, where, what do you want to achieve? How do you want to get there? And then the how, the small details of the how, these can change. So this is something essential. It's like sets of concepts, policies you create, even a way of working that can make a big difference. So going back to you wanting to achieve something, it's not about just saying, yeah, I have this idea and this, and we could do that, and we could do this, and we can do this, and this tomorrow, and then. We'll try that and we'll test this. And then, yes, because there are lots of buzzwords around. Yeah, we're going to test it. All right. How? Who would? Why? When? All those questions are key. Otherwise, the testing you're going to do is going to be irrelevant. The other part is, yes, the experience matters. I really want a great user experience and customer experience and yada, yada, yada. And then what can happen is hitting a box like Russian dolls, you know, creating a set of Russian dolls where one is in the other, in the other, in the other, in the other, and then you're not creating a good experience. So you're making it more complicated that you're moving people from one platform to another, to another, to get to what they want. This is not about a good experience. Saying I need something seamless is not about saying it. It's about really, really making it happen and knowing why and how and thinking about the long term. All right, how am I going to scale this and how would this fit into what I'm doing? So it's always about keeping your eyes open, keeping your brain wide open to potential developments, ensuring that what you're doing today can still be valid and relevant tomorrow. So this is another essential thing here. It's not always about time. It's not about money. Many things can be done. What you have today is not about always needing money and so on. If you feel you don't have the skill set to do something. If you can learn that very quickly, then fine. But if you believe you can do this in another way based on what you know how to do 
and where you believe the others can get it, go ahead and try this as well. It's not about turning someone into something they're not in no time, judging for something you can't really judge by yourself. This is why I'm a true believer in testing multiple things, having different ideas, knowing about different areas, but it's also good to know about your own area and just respect that rather than trying to jump into other areas you have no clue about. Because this can really be detrimental. It's not about knocking out everyone. I'm not going to go start discussing about coding and how to make something really technically feasible when it's not my area. It's maybe an area I have a little understanding and I can entertain a conversation. I can understand what they're talking about, make sense of it. But I'm not going to be the one who's going to lead it. I'm not going to be the one who's going to make the decisions. I can help in this thought process and I'm never going to be doing that because it's not my skill set. I'm not really going to learn about those things because it's not my thing. It's where I know I'm not going to be really good at. So I work with other people who are really good at that. And this is where you make things happen. This is where the magic happens. So yeah, these are just a few thoughts on the top of my mind. Really um, not not really planned for. I, maybe I should do a video where I try to break things down, but I hope this gives some sort of idea, some sort of direction to some people who are, you know, not struggling, but having some question marks, some unanswered questions on how to go about things. It's put it that way, going back to the idea of the puzzle, it's having all the pieces scattered all over the place and just trying to do something about them, but it's still not working. And actually, the way you are thinking and leading this, it's never going to work. So you're asking someone else to help you who doesn't know that much either about it. It's fine. You might discover, but you know, you can sometimes ask someone around you. It doesn't mean you have to hire someone again, but where else can you use your skill set in a way that can be more helpful? rather than, than trying to do something that you really don't know about. Can you afford to lose this time and money? This is the question here. If you can, do it. You know, you will learn, you will figure it out. Maybe, maybe in six months, maybe in a year, maybe in two months. I don't know. But if you can't, don't waste your time. Don't waste the money. Because especially today, especially in the startup world, where money is, I'm not going to say non-existent, it's just slower to come in terms of funding. Don't do that and try to reassess and see what is it that can, I can do now that can be helpful tomorrow and then leave what is not that important for later. This takes us to the last thing, and that would be probably another video. It's all about empathy. And this is something I'll be talking about later because that makes a massive difference as well. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments. If there's any topic you're interested in, we can dig deeper into that. This is, I know, all over the place, just on the top of my mind. I need to go. So thank you for watching.